Isn't it crazy how you can't even notice a thing? You wouldn't have any idea those LEDs were in there, man. What's going on, you two? EXO coming at you here. Just trying to stay warm inside today. It is cold outside. Whew. Hope you guys are doing well. Thanks again for tuning in. We have got some fun stuff to knock out in today's video. Last time we tested out the new ventilation setup, walked through the circuit wire by wire, picked up some fresh yin long cells at XS, then announced a cool little base head special at the end, which is getting even better today. So stick around. We'll be installing 120 of these bad boys in a huge 6S bank. That's 800 amp hours with the 40s. It takes six cells to form one bank, so it all adds up real quick. We actually split the bars in half over at Toolmaker, not just to fit his machine, but to make busing a little easier to manage in general. The bank itself will sit perfectly right in this little battery notch. It stands about yay tall, plenty of room for wiring, but once she's in there, whew, she's a bulky some bit, know what I'm saying? So it's best to take care of some of the small stuff now before I gotta worry about a face full of lithium. I'd say at the top of the list, LED lights. No demo rigs complete without a decent set. Picked up these really popular strips back in 2019. I've been dying to use a man, really nice 16 footers. And I'll be using these five volt converters for direct power. My buddy Blake Hunt swears by both of these and his stuff looks ridiculous. I remember first seeing his lighting set up and thinking, yep, I definitely want that. The thing is out of this world. Luckily, I picked up like six whole sets back then. Got love planning ahead, right? <laughs> but of course, there's just one minor problem. As I was gathering my thoughts for even starting, I quickly recalled, we got a rubberized coating on everything. These dang strips work with a peel off tape and there's no getting that to stick. Falls off like butter every single time, son of a so I thought about using hot glue, but that always falls off in the summer. Debated on super glue, but then if the strip dies, I'll peel off the finish. Even tossed around screws and clips, but that would be a literal nightmare if anything broke. Oh well though, sometimes when things don't work out right away, it opens up the door for an even better method. Check this out. I found these cheapo magnets at Home Deep, and they're surprisingly good. The size is just right to stick onto the backing, and the center holes actually help latch onto the rubber blobs so it doesn't move around. The package recommends good old super glue for attaching, so we'll dab up the backs of these mags onto our strips and use the pulling force of nature to hold them solid. All right, let's get measuring, fellas. Should help unroll her nice and quick. that we're just about to cut this thing to size and realize that our data arrows are in the opposite direction since we have our inputs on the left hand side I don't want a bird's nest right in the center of my display we'll have to cut off that lead down there and swap it and solder our own leads right here at the 29 Too bad, you only got about 11 inches of waste left over. All right, we got all eight strips cut to size. That's four per sides. And we got our station all set up to do some soldering on our pigtails. Now it's really crucial with these LED strips, there's plastic coating there, to have it about five to 600 degrees so you don't do any critical damage to her. We got our LED cables. We'll do one foot, two foot, three foot, all the way up because the power supplies are gonna be at the bottom. No sense having all that extra wire hanging out. And we'll go right around and heat shrink them all and make sure they're nice and secure. Buzz right through.
I'll just trim these down and it'll be perfect size for the end there. There we go, that's not so bad. One down, seven more to go. May have to do some fancy video editing on that one, because this was pretty hard to film, getting those close-up shots with the focusing. And I may do just one more little cap of solder on there, just for a little bit of neatness factor. So you pretty much get the picture. I'll push fast forward on this part, come back at you once we got all these puppies soldered. There we go, busted through all the monotony with some extra close quarters solder in there. I love that Heiko, it's been a true warrior. But we still got more sizing to do over in the vehicle so we can get the Techplex on here. This is standing out like a sore thumb, all this white wiring. We got all that black finish, so we wanted to make it blend in. So the biggest next thing that's gonna jump out is gonna be these things. Oh, are they falling? Nope, we're good. Are gonna be these things. This is all gonna be covered with black. Those are black on the top. We gotta paint these black as well. So let's bust out the tank, the paint. Well, we still got a little bit of daylight left and absorb as much of the UV as we can and get that underway as well. Oh, oh well, way too windy. I'm not even getting anything on her. <laughs> I'll let these bad boys dry off nice and thoroughly. And in the meantime, I'm gonna run some wire right here from the secret command center all the way through this nice little uh, conduit that we already have prepped. And it's gonna lead us to the extra little underground tunnel that we incorporated right here. I have the pull string. I don't know if you can see that the lighting's horrible right there. It'll go right along the side and then that'll get us to this corner where the power supply needs to be. And don't worry about this little section right here. That's all gonna be finished off with some carpet eventually. I was just getting this little fan vent situated and I never got around to it. Right here is looking real nice with all that carpet and everything's gonna match in the end. string we already got in there. That's both sides all prepped for wire and data power and ground for the left, data power and ground for the right. And now that we've given a little bit of time for some drying, let's go take a look at our converters. Oh yeah, nice and dry to the touch, super shiny. Now we can start working with them. And since they're both gonna be mounted somewhere right around here, I'm gonna attach them both to be one big solid block. That should do the trick. Let's go ahead and get her mounted into place.
man, I'm telling you, it was like it was meant to be over here, perfectly fitting. Look at that, it blends in great, especially with that bracket since it has that angular look, kind of aggressive. That heat sink is fitting the bill just right. I think now, oh, actually, did you notice? I added some carpet down there. That was a mouthful. It took me like freaking 18 hours to just do that one little patch of carpet because I suck at it. But now that it's finished, we have got the clean bill of sale to move on to all four sides. Let's go ahead and get them magnets sticking. Goodness gracious, 96 magnets later, and we got them all adhered, organized in a neat little rows. But it's not just a random placement of magnets. I actually landed on an LED on the opposite side to act as a little bit of a makeshift heat sink to absorb some of that heat because the color blue does tend to be the most hot. It's my favorite. So now that we got that done, I also had another bit of a brain fart moment. Holy crap, a really big category that totally eluded me. Oh, I spaced this one, fellas. My beautiful bus bars have LEDs too. The decorative faceplate pops right off with some screws, so everything glows from underneath. There's actually a whole machined out groove inside that fits a two foot strip perfectly. So I'll have to start from scratch on those suckers. No big deal though, because I just also realized I'm missing some crucial parts to even be able to finish up back here. The wiring is so important at this stage and I ran out of terminal blocks. Uh oh, had a great idea for hiding them behind the rack, but it's gonna be at least another four or five days before they're delivered. And I don't wanna wait that long before posting another video. So let's resume the install as far as possible by at least getting these lights mounted into place. This is working out way better than I thought. Oh my gosh, I'm loving it. But what I'm not loving is how those white wires are looking on the side. Now you can see why we kind of had to change our method. We'll snip the pigtails super short, but we gotta wait for those damn terminal blocks. It'll be worth the wait though. There she be, looking fantastic. Isn't it crazy how you can't even notice a thing from the front? You wouldn't have any idea those LEDs were in there, man. The grip is mint, the length is perfect. Now we just gotta wait for the dang snail mail during Christmas, oh boy. And speaking of Christmas, I wanted to spice up the spirit even more with a big base head bonus. In our last episode, you guys dropped comments for a chance to score a bank of 40 amp hour LTO cells. Showtime covered one whole bank and now I wanna do the same thing personally for two more people. I did have plans to swap out my girl's battery, but to be honest, I'd rather see more smiling faces for Christmas. So we'll keep the rules the same and extend and the goodness for this video as well. That means last video goes for its own bank and this video goes for two more banks. So get those comments in and let's have some fun for the holidays, shall we? Thanks again to all my diehard subscribers. It means a lot to have you here year after year. This is EXO signing out. Stay loud and stay proud. I will catch you on the rebound. <laughs>